So let's take a closer look at this uh, extrude deformer and uh, it's really a parametric extrusion generator which can be affected by effectors as you can see here you can load uh, any effector available from this uh, effector list and let me show you an example of its uh, usage and maybe this will be a good idea for me to show you a little trick uh, on uh, how to texture your primitives and by texturing primitives i really mean texturing selections on them let me show you how you can do that first thing you will need is this correction deformer and i will hold the shift key so this will make it a child of my plane object i will enable this correct shading lines so i can see the polygons and as you may know you can use this correction deformer to access the components of primitive objects so let's maybe select uh, you guys here so this is still a parametric object it's not converted to a polygon so let's say maybe this one this one and uh, this one so now once you select those guys simply create a selection so set selection you can do the same from this menu here i have a slightly modified global pop-up menu and also add a material here so we will pick some uh, nice color maybe let's go with uh, this yellow one and uh, simply apply it to your correction deformer so like this now once the material is applied simply drop the selection inside here so you would think that uh, really nothing happened but in fact it did so you just have to drag this selection onto the plane object once you've done that you can simply transfer the material and those polygons even though this is a parametric object will be textured with this polygon selection so that is a really nice trick for you to work with now do note that you can get rid of this correction deformer now you only use it to access those polygons so we can delete it without worrying and uh, if you will play with segmentation here you will get decent insight in how Cinema 4D creates a parametric objects so you can see those guys are really traveling as the parametric settings are determining the segmentation on this guy now this extrude deformer works uh, pretty much as any other deformer so it has to be a child of the object it deforms so now this guy will simply extrude all faces on this plane according to these settings here so here we have uh, extrusion steps that is uh, really simple under transform you can decide how high those uh, extrusions will be and of course you can select only the polygon selection so let's in fact do that we will limit the extrusion just to the selected polygons inside this polygon selection now one would say that uh, this is thing really spectacular and uh, that's certainly true but uh, the beauty of this guy is an ability to load effectors so let's load a, maybe a formula effector and you will see that uh, you can get uh, really interesting results so let's maybe enter here 45 and press play so we have some sort of a nice wiggling motion you can try maybe position but uh, let's go with y and of course everything stays uh, parametric so you can add extrusion steps you can uh, define how the transformation will occur so it can be per step so it will be different so you can clearly see the different behavior and uh, all in all it's a really simple deformer here you can scale down this uh, guy so they are looking a little bit more uh, different and uh, that's pretty much it as far as the extrusion deformer goes so let's uh, 
delete it and we will talk now about this poly fx and this guy is really something what it does it will break every object into components and will give you the ability to use effectors on that uh, component so you can see the effector tab and the fall off that is uh, identical to other fall offs we have uh, worked with already and uh, under transformation you will see really basic options that you can also see on a regular object under object you only have the mode option which has two different modes so full polys and segments or partial polys and splines so this guy will work best if you give it something that it can affect so let's create maybe a disk object and uh, as with any other deformer you have to put it as a child of that object so it really accepts anything it accepts polygons splines and parametric primitives let's add a material to our guy just to make things a little bit more interesting and uh, here under this poly fx if you will play with this uh, transformation values you will see it simply translates the object and uh, you may be fooled by this but actually what is happening it's moving all polygons separately in one of these directions just to prove you this i will rotate this guy so you see it broke that object into segments so let's uh, zero that out and uh, i believe there is something that uh, i didn't show you in any of uh, previous training so if you right click these little arrows the value will reset to default so it's very very handy and uh, I must admit I'm not uh, really using it often but it's good to know that you can do that so let's continue and this deformer also accepts effectors so let's load a simple effector so let's load a plane effector and you see it's currently moving this object in fact it's moving all polygons 100 centimeters in this value so most often you will have to change the initial value for example i want this guy to go upwards and that would be z in this case so let's do it like this and uh, if there is no fall off active on the effector then the effect will be on the complete object so let's load maybe a spherical fall off and you will see how this object has split and uh, if i move this you will see that it actually moves the polygons itself now you would maybe expect uh, different results for these guys and uh, currently this behavior this uh, sort of a partial splitting is due to this fall off if you change this to let's say box you will have different results so it's really dependent and it offers a lot of power and uh, flexibility now one could uh, easily think that uh, you really cannot do much with this poly fx uh, apart to really breaking your object into pieces but uh, just to prove you wrong let's do a little bit more of a advanced setup and you will see how mogra can uh, really give you spectacular results easily and uh, for that purpose i will temporarily disable this guy so we have uh, this uh, initial state and for my poly fx object i will add a inheritance effector and uh, i will do something that uh, may seem a little bit odd at the beginning but uh, i will drop this inheritance effector as an object into itself so this may seem a little bit weird but uh, i'm using inheritance itself because i want to avoid using another object and uh, also it will help me create the effect that i want since i want to scale this guy so here under coordinates for this uh, inheritance effector i will set these guys to zero and i will add a keyframe for all of them so on frame zero 
the scale of the inheritance will be zero. Let's scrap time to a uh, frame 30 and uh, I'll put this back to one and add another keyframe. So now if I press play, simply have a simple scaling occurring. But uh, what if I here under effect or change this to animation and use the same values from start to end as I used for the keyframes for the scale. So let's enter 30 here and uh, I want to use the node as a transform space. So if I hit play, some things will be much more easier to understand. So now these guys are sort of forming. What if I set this value to out and create a step gap for this guy? So every single guy will have a step gap of one frame. Let's uh, give it a shot. So now they're really forming a circle. What is important here under this step gap is uh, that you can use sub frame values because currently if I press play those guys really don't have the time to form the full circle. If I increase the value those guys are going to slow down even more but uh, I can enter decimal value here so let's uh, try point uh, maybe three and things will happen much more quicker so this is really cool and nice effect i can even enable my plane effector play with it so you can create a really interesting effect so that is really really cool let me stop this go back now let's go a step further here i will hide this plane effector and this uh, poly fix so we don't have uh, this clutter in the viewport but we still have the effect and uh, I'll put this complete guy under cloner and uh, if I press play I will get three clones and uh, maybe I will get rid of this uh, material because we will possibly use a random effector on uh, our guys just to have some sort of a color and we could also maybe even get rid of this uh, plane effector so we have uh, these guys forming nicely. Let's add a random effector just in color mode. So on and uh, let's maybe set this to add. Stop this, go back and uh, I will hide this or disable this inheritance effector because I want to see these guys uh, in the viewport. And uh, if you remember correctly, this effector has uh, keyframes on the scale option. That's the reason why we can't see anything. If we would scrap the time, the things would start uh, happening. So let's just uh, disable it for a second. I'll maybe create a radial constellation of the clones, maybe let's say 10. And in 100 centimeters, we already use that value. I can scale down this uh, disk object so you see how everything stays parametric and non-destructible. That's the power of MoGraph. And now, pretty much nothing will happen, but if I enable the inheritance effector, then things will become a little bit more interesting. Stop this, go back. And we can go a step further. We can even add a time effector and by default they will revolve under heading rotation for 90 degrees so let's press play and see how that will work and uh, you can already see we are getting a really nice results now nothing is stopping you from adding more objects under cloner so let's maybe create a torus and uh, I will just scale it interactively in the viewport like this and uh, maybe this could work and I will put it also as a child of the cloner. Okay, so let's in fact copy this poly affix and assign it to the torus also. Let's see what results do we have. So press play. Play with uh, some settings here. So maybe scale this down a bit and uh, 
how about this this is really really cool let your imagination go maybe let's uh, disable this for a second and uh, let's add another object so let's add maybe this platonic we will scale it down significantly like uh, something like this maybe and we will also drop it under cloner you can uh, maybe increase the count here so let's say 30 and uh, we will increase the radius also so let's say 200 i will just zoom out so you can see things a little bit uh, better let's go even with 20 it will be a little bit easier setup now in the random effector i will just enable one of these temporal guys so we can see this effect uh, live so let's maybe go with the turbulence and let's press play and see what do we have so we have a really really interesting effects if we will put this uh, to a noise and uh, and maybe change uh, one of these values so synchronized or indexed we would get uh, different colors so MoGraph is really great you can change things parametrically create uh, stuff like that so I'm sure you can imagine quite a few applications of what I've uh, shown you now so how about this this is really really great so let me stop this go back so let your imagination and creativity loose because pretty much everything is possible with MoGraph you just have to get this technical knowledge under your fingers otherwise uh, achieving results uh, like this will be really difficult you have to invest time to understand the logic behind all this and once it settles once you understand the logic and the basic idea then uh, really a completely new dimension is enough for development for you and uh, you'll be able to create fantastic uh, setups and uh, great scenes and uh, overall effects now in the next lesson i will just briefly explain a few of these guys here under deformers that are actually a part of the mograph and uh, once we do that we will cover this incredible most plan which will really blow you away it's simply superb okay so that being said let's go to our next lesson